What's up guys, thanks for coming to Game in Canada with me. In recent days, Nintendo has tried their best to knock us out of the homebrew races, but Mr. NBA Yo has been standing at the forefront putting up a great fight. I want you guys to get ready for this week in homebrew. And we'll see if we manage to podium or at least stay in the homebrew races. Right off the bat, Nintendo released an 11.6 firmware update. And is it safe to update? Well, yes, if you have custom firmware, go ahead and make a NAND backup and then go ahead and update. Everything seems to be working fine. At first we thought NTR custom firmware was not working, but streamers don't have to worry. You can update and NTR custom firmware is still working completely fine. If you happen to have homebrew, is it safe to update? Technically, yes it is, but you will miss out on Flipnote Studio as Flipnote Studio hacks just got released and you have to update Flipnote Studio if you update to 11.6. So if you manage to stay on 11.5, you will be able to open the old version of Flipnote Studio that I told you guys to download a few videos ago and this will allow you to get homebrew on your 11.5 device. As I said, it's not working on 11.6 at the moment, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys my video on it in case you guys missed that. So you can see over here is my video, how to get homebrew on 11.5 for free. So if you manage to download Flipnote Studio 3D, then you can go ahead and use Note Hacks or Last Hacks to get homebrew on your 11.5. It's super easy. You just need to copy a few files over to your SD card, open up Flipnote Studio, and then launch the little note, and it will load you into homebrew. It's pretty awesome. Just like that. Up first for the 3DS Homebrew is a very recent release of God Mode 9 version 1.4.2. Now not a ton of new stuff is implemented as this is just a small derp fix and there was actually a few more recent updates as 1.4.1 came out a couple of days ago and even before that around 10 days ago 1.4.0 came out. A ton of implementations have been put into God Mode 9 and it doesn't mean a ton to the end user and you can go ahead and read over these if you want. I will obviously have a link in the description. You can see here one maybe important thing for 1.4.1 is that the GBA Virtual Console save dumping and injecting has gotten better and it says the save format is fixed for emulators and the injection dump process has gotten much less tedious. So you can go over to the guide and read how to, how to dump and inject Virtual Console saves for the Game Boy Advance. Up next is a release by Missing No 1234 and it is dubbed GCC Thing. So this is a cross-platform gamepad compatible input redirect client using Python and TPP Flush. So essentially this is a modified input redirection client using Python that allows you to use the Wii U GameCube controller adapter on your PC to control your Nintendo 3DS. Now this is actually pretty cool because it has one feature that is missing from the current input redirection client QT that we use with the built-in Rosalina menu. And that is the ability to control your 3DS with the keyboard. So maybe I will try to get this going in another video. I'm not too good at getting things with Python set up, but we'll see how it goes. You can go ahead and check out the release over here on GitHub in case you wanted to test this out. I unfortunately don't have a GameCube adapter so I won't be able to test that feature but it would be cool to use my keyboard, you know, almost as a plug and play controller on my Nintendo 3DS. Up next is a proof of concept by Hex Overflow which is called Open Services. Now I don't know too much about this but if we scroll down here you can see Quantum Cat asked what will this be able to do when it's finished and the goals are to have a friend server as well as a Nintendo network ID and probably eShop IDK. Again I'm not exactly sure what that is but it says would they just be replacing the NNID settings in friends list? Yeah maybe some games too like Mario Kart 7. So maybe that means replacing the community service in Mario Kart 7 where you can set up little communities and have sort of your own little tournaments and whatnot. 
I guess I'll keep you guys posted on this little project here as eventually one day the Nintendo 3DS's services are going to be ended and some people might want to look for a way to emulate them so to speak. If you guys have a more technical explanation of how this will work or how this is going to work in the future then please go down to the comments and let me know. You guys know I'm a noob, I don't understand any of this stuff. Up next is a script assisted speed run which is a Nintendo 3DS hacking world record. So essentially this guy got Boot 9 Strap and Luma 3DS onto a Nintendo 3DS that was stock in 2 minutes and 2 seconds. So this is absolutely crazy. If we go ahead and just kind of watch this for a second, I'll put a link in case you want to watch the whole video, but I'm going to skip to a couple of parts. You can see he turns it on real quick with the magnet and everything, and then it boots into a god mode script that I guess he made, and this god mode script is going ahead and installing a whole bunch of stuff. He then pops out the SD card, sticks in a different SD card, and it seems to install even more stuff, and then it goes ahead and reboots, and then he injects what looks like homebrew into this using the Rosalina menu. So he's already got custom firmware, but then when he goes into download play, it opens up FBI instead of homebrew. And then it, that goes ahead and installs a few things, like there's an, an enemy theme manager, and then there's FBI. How freaking nuts is that? <laughs> Go check out that video, give homie a like, and share this around because this is pretty awesome. Up next is an update to multi-updater. This brings it up to version 4.0 and I guess it was rewritten in C++. Now I don't use this program and I don't have any plans on using it but if you guys want to see a tutorial on this then please go ahead and go down to the comments and let me know if you want a multi-updater tutorial. Now this program basically has the ability to update all of your programs for you so that you don't have to manually update them any longer. There's still a few that aren't able to do it but I do believe that even this now has the ability to write to your CTR NAND in case you wanted to have it have the ability to update your maybe your god mode 9 that is on your CTR NAND inside your payloads folder. But like I say, I don't have any plans to use it, but if you guys want to see it, of course, I'll bring it to you. Up next is a new update to 3DS Ident by Joel16. Now this includes major code cleanup and refactoring. Now checks for functions to succeed before grabbing info. Now there's some other stuff that you guys can read here, but I just want to touch on that. If you go down here and it says services that fail will now display the message this service cannot be accessed with hacks. So hacks means if you're using homebrew without having custom firmware, it'll now tell you that you can't access that certain bit of info that is only available to custom firmware users. So go ahead and update to this if you guys feel like it. One cool thing that you can do with it is check out my video for the 3DS screen lottery and you can determine whether your 3DS has a TN screen or an IPS screen and see whether or not you won the IPS lottery. Now some people have a top IPS screen and a bottom TN screen and that is pretty good. That's almost what you're looking for but some people do get blessed with a dual IPS display and their 3DS just has that more crisp color and just looks that much better. If you guys are interested in seeing whether or not you won the lottery, go ahead and download 3DS Ident and then check out my video over here. As you can see, some pretty big stuff happened in the 3DS world. Let's hope the next week is a little bit quieter with no more updates from Nintendo. Let's see what happened in Homebrew for the Wii U. There wasn't a ton of news that happened for the Wii U this week, so I'm just going to go over a couple of key things. As you can see here, I put out a video called How to Soft Mod Your Wii U Part 10, the Virtual Wii Nintendo Forwarder. So this is essentially a Nintendo Forwarder for your Wii U home menu that allows you to play GameCube games using the Wii U gamepad. So this is a fairly functional thing and something that a lot of people want. And so maybe go check out this video if you haven't seen it already. Now the reason that I'm telling you about this is because if you head over to Wii U Hacks on Reddit, you can see it's now possible to inject GameCube ISOs into the virtual Wii. 
So this allows you to essentially do the same thing over here as put in a Nintendo forwarder, but instead to specific games. So you could have maybe Super Mario Sunshine as a little icon sitting here, and when you clicked on it, it would boot you straight into Nintendo and load up Mario Sunshine. Pretty cool, if you follow this little link over here, it'll actually take you over to the GBA temp thread for injecting Wii games into the Wii U, and it takes you specifically to this little post right here by Fix94, who is responsible for Nintendo, and he has these instructions that, albeit are a little bit hard to follow, will give you the ability to inject your GameCube ISO. So if you guys wanted me to make a video on this, go down to the comments and let me know. Up next, we're over here on Nintendo Everything, and you can see this is a report from September 8th, 2017, showing the most sold games on the Wii U's eShop. Now, strangely enough, Brain Age was the most sold game that week on the eShop. Now, this just happens to correspond with me releasing a video that got 24,000 views that tells you to go buy Brain Age so that you can get Hacks Chi on your Wii U. I'm not saying that I made Brain Age the most sold game on the eShop, but I might be saying that. The last story is actually sort of a combined two posts from Wii U Hacks over on Reddit and it is essentially a couple of different options for backing up the Wii U's services, such as the Miiverse. Now, to me, I don't really know what any of this means, as I never use the Miiverse or anything like that, but there are two links, essentially, guides that are going to show you how you can get into the Nintendo services and potentially back up your Miiverse things, I guess. I honestly don't know, just looking at this hurts my head, this is way, way over anything that I can do, and I'm just going to have to let you guys go ahead and click these links and read through them and see if it makes any sense to you. So if you're interested in trying to back up your Miiverse information or any of your posts like that, then these very well might help you. I hope you guys enjoyed. It was a little bit of a slow week for the Wii U, but the 3DS did get a 11.6 update as well as free homebrew, so that is pretty awesome. Make sure you slam that thumbs up and subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'm going to be trying to have these videos every week, but sometimes it's a slow week and not a lot happens. Much love. Catch you next time. Peace.